Now, tonight is an opportunity to be informed about some of the biggest challenges facing us as a society. I think there's been such weariness in the community lately. Um, there's the challenge on so many fronts simultaneously. There's the housing crisis, cost of living pressures, these terrible news stories in the papers about domestic violence um, and mental health as well. And I think we all understand how these overlapping crises all feed into each other as well. Domestic and family violence can happen to anybody, regardless of the house that you live in and regardless of how intelligent you are. But I think the biggest takeaway is that domestic and family violence does not discriminate. Mum, since that night when he kicked you out, I've been wondering how many ways a life can turn out. I've been looking back. Could I have changed this? Am I the reason for the drama? Am I the basis? He told me you're trying to turn me against him. He told me you don't want me and you don't respect him. And sometimes I don't know what I'm supposed to believe, but I keep replaying that moment when he told you to leave. One of the wonderful things about Anglicare and other similar services is that once an individual that's in crisis or maybe their family is in crisis gets help for housing, for example, they're all of a sudden exposed, potentially for the first time, to a whole range of other services that are provided by the organisation. That particular casework can really lift an individual out of a terrible crisis situation and offer some hope. It is important that we say unequivocally that Anglicare is not aligned politically. It's aligned to people who need help and it's aligned by faith in God. But something about a person willing to listen gave me permission to share about my position, said she could help me navigate this complex system, maybe even find a permanent place I could live in without having to worry about the threat of eviction. We believe in a God who sees you and who knows what you're going through and wants you to find safety, hope and healing. This is such a pervasive social issue. I think it's one that we all need to become well informed about so that we can see those signs and also know where to turn to find help. We are not talking about numbers or statistics, although they themselves are appalling. We are talking about people, individuals, made in the image of God, known by Him. Will you partner with Anglicare by committing to help fund this vital and life-changing work? I know it ain't all roses, still hurts to think about him, and I sometimes wonder how much this body I'm in carries the same stuff that can make a man violent. But my promise to you, Mum, is not to be silent. I'm gonna use my voice. I'm gonna try to be different. I don't wanna just become another male statistic. I wanna be the kind of man who loves others enough to look in the mirror and face my own stuff. Do you remember, Mum, how I used to look at the trees and see our lives reflected in the branches and leaves? Well, these days I've been thinking about the role of a forest, a place to be supported, a place to be honest. And all the people that have helped us to find our new home, well, they're the forest we belong to, Mum. We're not alone. The love of a friend is the love of walking side by side with someone. Because when you're a friend, you walk together, you walk side by side, you face in the same direction. So you face the world together. This is not someone doing something to you. This is standing shoulder to shoulder with you and walking through it together, taking the first step. But then friends don't just leave you. Friends keep walking on the journey. So that's why we use the language side by side, because we see it as um, Anglicare actually having a posture of friendship with the people that we serve. Um, we're not doing something to them, we're walking 